The eighth episode of Star Trek The Next Generation came to us on November 9th of 1987. The episode begins shortly after the discovery of a pre-warp civilization on a planet in the Rubicon star system. Instead of avoiding it completely as the Prime Directive would dictate, Picard makes contact and sends an away team down for shore leave. The initial away team sent down reports back with nothing but good news. They make love at the drop of a hat. Any hat. Apparently believing this place to be too good to be true, Picard sends more people, including the young Wesley Crusher. The team is greeted rather... warmly, to say the least. Nice planet. Although since Wesley is kind of young, it gets a little awkward. Go for it, Wes. You got this. Although perfectly willing to participate in these activities, the crew of the Enterprise does seem a little bit taken back by the openness of the Edo. Shall we go there now, or remain and play? Here, what did you think of the planet of the Nymphomaniacs? <laughs> the planet of the what? Well, you missed that! Oh, that's a royal planet. Some people spend years on that. Since Wesley's a bit too young to be participating in any of this, he gets sent away to play with some younger kids. Meanwhile, back on board the Enterprise, the crew discovers a semi-cloaked ship orbiting the planet. The alien vessel sends a probe, which warns Picard not to interfere with the people on the planet. The probe then interfaces with Data in order to learn more about the Federation. Back on the planet, Tosh learns about the Edo's rather unusual criminal justice system. From a certain perspective, their system is rather simple. There are a number of laws that have to be followed. And regardless of the severity of the crime, the punishment is always the same. Death penalty. Of course, it's a rather extreme punitive response, so there are a number of extra wrinkles added into the system. Law enforcement only actually exists in a small number of places at any one time. Any time in which a crime is committed in an area where the law enforcement system isn't in place, the crime is simply ignored. Any crime which occurs in an area where the system is in place, and these places are chosen seemingly at random, the death penalty applies. Wesley unwittingly commits a crime in this culture when, while playing ball with his new friends, he stumbles through some glass of a greenhouse and disturbs new plants. This being an area where the criminal justice system is in force at that moment, he is sentenced to death immediately. Riker and the rest of the away team arrive and defend Wesley. Fortunately, the crime enforcement zone had moved on by this point, so none of the assault that they performed was actually illegal at the time. And if this zone was still in effect, you would all deserve death. Despite it going against their culture, the Edo allow Wesley to stand some sort of a trial, given that the Federation has vastly better power and technology than them. And since you are advanced in other ways too, I suggest you use your superior powers to rescue the Wesley boy. We will record him as a convicted criminal out of our reach. Bound by the laws of the Prime Directive, Picard is simply unable to beam Wesley up and escape the planet. Picard brings one of the Edo back up to the Enterprise in order to see if she can identify the being that exists in orbit as their god. Is it God? The entity responds negatively to seeing one of its children removed from the planet and threatens the Enterprise. In a hurry, Reven is beamed back down to the planet. Data finally awakes after interfacing with the entity's probe. He informs Picard that the entities on the other ship are likely just standing by to see and observe what the Enterprise will do, seeing if Picard will actually follow his own rules of the Prime Directive. If Picard is seen not to follow his own rules, the entity may react negatively. Picard beams back down to the planet where he discovers that Reven now believes him to be a god thanks to his advanced technology. I saw you share the sky with God. You must be gods. Picard denies this interpretation and decides he's going to take Wesley with him, Prime Directive be damned. While attempting to beam away, the transporter beam is blocked by the entity. Picard manages to convince the entity to allow them to escape and they beam out successfully. But the question of justice has concerned me greatly of late. And I say to any creature who may be listening, there can be no justice so long as laws are absolute. Back aboard the Enterprise, Picard makes an offer to remove a nearby colony that was set up recently, and the entity disappears. 
I feel one thing that was completely unnecessary in this episode was the reliance on the alien entities floating around in the orbit of the planet. Now, I know why it was put there. There was a tendency, especially with sci-fi and fantasy, to try and ratchet up the stakes as high as possible. It's always going to be, everyone's about to die, the world's going to be destroyed, this, that, or something like that. I say that's not really always necessary. The real thought-provoking aspect of this episode, and the sort of moral of the story, is whether or not the Enterprise should abide by the laws of the Edo. And beyond that, whether they should follow their laws of the Prime Directive, even in a situation where it seems as though the Prime Directive is a little bit misapplied. The alien entity in space just comes across to me as a bit of a lazy plot device. An object that exists in space to ensure that Captain Picard is either going to follow the Prime Directive or is able to, you know, talk his way out of it. But that plot device turns something that should have been an introspective view of Picard into an extrospective look at an unknown alien entity. This is no longer about the morality of Picard, the morality of the Federation, or the Prime Directive. It becomes simply an issue of what will the alien entity allow you to do. Although it is clearly unintentional, I had always believed the beginning of this episode was kind of funny. These characters from Starfleet all prim and proper beam down to the planet to get themselves some lovin'. Especially with how enthusiastic Tasha is. That's all I really have to say about this episode. It's average for the first season, troubling as that is, but unfortunately below average for the series as a whole. Two out of five.